Um, I knew this, it was going to be this style game. Um, I knew that team had a lot of fight in them. I knew we were always going to get everyone's best shot. And um, I knew they were going to make some adjustments that we gonna, that we had to adjust to. And my fear was we haven't had any practice times to familiarize ourselves with certain situations. And so we were kind of stagnant and paralyzed a little bit, um, you know, and they hit us in the mouth and we didn't get out on shooters. They went small. We didn't finish layups. We didn't have discipline, um, you know, but the main thing I looked on my players' faces and I, I, did, I saw some pouting and I saw some uh, self-pity. And that's what I just told them in, in the locker room that that's completely unacceptable. You know, we have young men that's more than capable, but if you're playing the game of basketball, expecting everything to go your way all the time, then you're in the wrong sport. You probably need to take up, uh, I don't know, uh, Nintendo or PS5s or whatever it's going to be because in this game, man, it's competitive and people got pride. They're going to fight back. And, you know, to be completely honest with you, we had guys that we were depending on that didn't show up um, and it took them a while to get emotionally secure. Um, and I expect more from them. And in the second half, I, I thought it was a back and forth game. But overall, I think Mike Melvin really saved us. He came in, he really energized the team. He made some plays. He was the spirit. He was the heart and soul when everyone had their hair down and it was easy to feel sorry for yourselves. And, you know, we, we're not oblivious to the fact that we're, we're in no position to be playing back-to-back -back games right now. Our guys, they were done. <laughs> like, their legs was done. And, and I knew we weren't going to shoot it as well as we shot it last night. But, you know, hats off to South Carolina State. And hats off to the our guys down the stretch. I thought we made some significant plays at some significant times. The and one by CJ was obviously huge. Um, the charge by Justin was high, obviously huge. And we got a, a defensive stop at the end of the game. And, you know, but we got a lot of work to do. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Now open the floor for questions. Coach, um, I know you guys were um, just trying to figure it out heading into this two game stint. Uh, what was your goal uh, in the last two days to get out of your team? And, and did they accomplish that goal? Or did you guys get better in those last two days? Well, the goal was to win the game. And <laughs> I just think any time, any opportunity that we had to play, we got better. Even if we lost, we got better because we haven't played basketball. The only way you can get better in playing basketball is to play the game. And, you know, we had an opportunity to play against someone that didn't look like us with a different jersey on um where you know we didn't know and expect what was coming we had the game plan we had the scout like it was just really really different it felt like we haven't played basketball in two years so you know I'm extremely proud of our young men but I expect more and I made that quite clear to them um I expect more out of them take the opponent away I expect more from us I don't expect them to allow their emotions to be directly connected to whether the basketball is going to go in the hole. And I thought that's what happened tonight. You know, last night we was on fire. Tonight we missed our first three or four shots. And now I saw shoulders slump, heads drop, pity parties. They used to argue with one another. Like, nah, that's, that's, that's sensitivity and that's crybabies to me. And we raise young men around here and that's unacceptable. And I just had to let them know exactly how I felt. <clears throat> Lavelle, you got Question a bunch more yeah, Lavelle, you got a bunch more of these back-to-back -back games. Is that fair for the kids? It's just, is, is that any way to play basketball? Or is it just how it's going to be to get to get your games in this season? Yeah, it's, it's tough, man. It's it's unfortunate. Um, you know, when you miss so many times, they mandating this rule that you got to have 13. I'm all about the safety and welfare of our young men. We're in no position to do that. We got a kid who I think pulled the hamstring. Hopefully he didn't. But, you know, it's just difficult when you go through these things, man, because – it's almost like they're being punished for something that's that that's not their fault. You know, if, this, if we put ourselves in this hole, then I'm all for it. But it's a pandemic, right? And, you know, no one is untouchable, right? And just because you get a couple of cases doesn't mean the university is bad or the team is bad. It's just what society hasn't done and obeyed the rules and regulations of the pandemic has bled into the universities. Right. And unfortunately, it's just touched our guys. And I just think it's completely unfair. And now we, we're hearing in the back of our mind, we got to get all these games in just to be NCAA eligible. And, 
you know, I think it's completely unfair. You know, I just think, man, let's finish the season, let the chips fall where they may, everybody go to the postseason. If you can play a game, you can. If you can't, then you cancel the game for the safety and welfare. But, you know, NCAA is a business, man. Like, let's, let's not get it twisted. You know, the safety and welfare of these young men don't come first. It's always about the dollar, dollar bill. So, so that's your solution to just kind of kind of let everybody come play in the tournament and see what happens or or is there a solution at this point you know it it seems like every solution i make nobody listens right? so i'm kind of solutioned out you know at the beginning of the year i just said listen i didn't think it was fair for us to be making decisions on a pandemic in the month of july about what's going to happen in january like we're six months out this thing is going to change this city may have spike cases today, but tomorrow it may be this city, next week it may be this city and so on and so forth. This is the fear of the unknown and none of us have ever been in this predicament of these situations. So my initial solution was, you know, a couple of things. Let everybody play each other and just take bus rides and uh, we can do a back-to-back -back that way, right? Because at that time, everyone was concerned about getting on planes, right? And, you know, again, just having conspiracy theories that we really didn't know anything about. My second solution was the safest time on everyone's campus is after Thanksgiving and before Christmas. That means the kids are, the students are normally on fall break and the only people that's on campus are the athletes, which is essentially is a bubble within itself. Let's find a centralized location, you know, North Carolina, it can be our place, I don't know, and have four teams come to North Carolina we can supplement the cost and everybody can pay for the um, testing each day, right? And we can have our own little bubble and just play each other like a round robin for a two week span. So if everyone played each other twice in that span between uh, November, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, then you have eight games in. Now you get a lot of kids to go home for the break. They come back after break, Everyone practiced three or four days. And now from the 28th through January the 5th, it's still a bubble because the kids haven't come back from school for campus and you play eight more games. Now you got 16 games in, you save some money, you created your own bubble. And now anything after the 16 games, you can it's gravy. So you can just go get a game at Michigan or wherever you need to do to um, fundraise for your program and have the guarantee games. But I'm just a basketball coach, man. Nobody <laughs> that wasn't popular at the time. And, you know, I, I, I'm not saying my solution is right, but in hindsight, I, I thought, I still think that makes the most sense. Coach Justin Wright, he didn't play today, but won his first weekly award named MEAC Rookie of the Week. Can you talk a little bit about what he was able to contribute over the last couple of games for the Eagles? I'm so proud of him, man. Like he, he's fought, right? He's fought. That's my little guy right there, man. And you know, I was disappointed because um, we didn't do a good job of starting the game off where we could get him some 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 time, right? We dug ourselves such a deep hole that I, I thought it was unfair for him to witness that. And I just told our seniors about leadership, right? Y'all out here pouting and moping across the floor and this freshman is looking at y'all. You're supposed to be paving and showing him the way, right? The same way that Jabri, showed, the Jabri Blunt showed you guys the way. And I'm holding him extremely accountable for that, man, because that that young man deserves, you know, it's hard because we got a lot of a lot of bodies, a lot of people that's capable. So um, you have to show and prove once you get on the floor. But he's he's sticking he's sticking around and he's tough. He's our toughest defender. And, you know, this is he's he's playing with house money. So he gets this year back and we're going to ride to the wheels fall off, man, because I love him. He's going to be really good. Coach, thank you very much for your time. We'll see you this weekend. Thank you, guys.